Today we've got a really cool car in the workshop with us, something a little bit different. It's a Lancia Stratos reimagination by a company called Lister Bell and it's their STR model. So this car is a completely new car, ground up build, and it's designed by Lister Bell to resemble the Lancia Stratos as an imagination point, but it's much more modern, nicer to drive. Still got a nice V6 engine in there for plenty of power. It only weighs 900 and so kilos, so less than a ton but you've got a few more creature comforts in there, like air conditioning. It's a nicer car to drive and use on the roads as well. And it's also much cheaper than if you were to go and find an original Lancia Stratos 2. And the upkeep of, of this model is much less due to the modern components that are being used underneath the car. So really cool machining with us today. And as this is such a new build, it's in for a complete suspension setup. It's currently just been bolted together. So it's all over the place at the moment. So we're going to get this on and we're going to give it a full geometry alignment, but we're also going to be giving this car a full corner weight and alignment, which is what this video is going to be on today. And we're going to talk you through what a corner weight and alignment is and also how you do it and what we're aiming for and what the whole point of it is as well. So we're going to get into that now. Corner weighing is looking at the mass of the car and then manipulating that mass to get the contact patch at each tire as even as possible. So looking at this car now, it's got its four wheels on and each tire is in contact with the floor. Underneath each tire, we've currently got a set of corner weights, which are effectively scales that tell us how much mass is present at each wheel. This can then be manipulated to get that contact patch as even as possible. The reason we're doing this is under heavy braking, for example, if each front tire had a completely different mass, say 100 kilos on one and 200 kilos on the other, then one tire would have significantly more grip under braking than the other, which could lead to the lighter wheel locking up and losing traction. Equally, on the driven wheels, so on this car, the rear wheels, if you had 100 kilos different at the rear tires, at the contact patch, one tire would be more tendent to try and spin up, which would be the lighter wheel, and that can really play with the diff and it can give traction issues. So if we have those contact patches as even as possible, down to within a kilo different to each other, then it has even levels of grip and traction. There is a little bit more to it as well when we talk about cross weights, but we'll talk about that a bit later on the whiteboard and get into that. The cars that we can corner weight need to have height adjustable suspension. So this car has got coilovers fitted with it as standard and some cars do come out of the factory with it fitted as well, such as some Porsche GT cars, some Ferraris, some Mercedes AMG GTRs, they come with a coilover adjustable suspension. But on the whole, most cars don't have height adjustable suspension. So it is usually an aftermarket coilover that needs to be fitted that has a height adjustable spring perch usually. And that means we can tune the ride height and therefore corner weight the car. Before you corner weight the car, there's a few things you need. So first of all, you need some scales so you can weigh the mass at each contact patch. You're also going to need to be able to get those scales as level as possible. They need to be perfectly flat with each other across all four corners. So height adjustable trays are perfect for that. And then also having a laser level so you can actually level between the four to make sure they're all exactly flat with each other. You also need a tire pressure gauge so that you can set the tire pressures even at, at operating pressure. So whatever you're going to use the car at, set those pressures exactly on the pressure gauge because even a PSI can throw out the corner weights. And finally, you want to be disconnecting the drop links. So when you're corner weighing the car and making the ride height slightly different, it can carry tension in the anti-roll bar and that can really throw off the readings. So the best thing to do is disconnect one side of the roll bar at one end of the drop link, just so it's disconnected from controlling that axle, one front and one rear, and that'll just take that out of the equation. And then when we come to doing the corner weighting, you're going to need the driver's mass in the driver's seat. And this is because when the car is moving and being driven, the driver will be in the car, hopefully. And that means that we're getting accurate reading. So otherwise, if we did it without the driver and the driver got in the car, it'd mess up all this work. So you need to at least ballast the seat or sit the driver in the car. Either or is absolutely fine. So we just got the car in a position where we can take some corner weighting readings. So with this being a completely fresh build, we did give it a full cycle. So we've done ride heights, we've got the geometry close, and now we've corner weighted it. The reason behind that is if the, cam the cameras are completely different, which they were, and we were to corner weight the car and then set camber, that change in camber being so dramatic would then affect the corner weight. So you better get in the car quite close and then moving on to your corner weighing. So we've done all the procedures, we've got the driver mass ballasted in the seat, and we've got these readings out. So total mass of the car is 1,045 kilos with the driver in there, so really lightweight. 
We've then got this layout here. So like this diagram, we've got the front left, the front right, the rear left and the rear right. And this is the mass present at each wheel that make this number up. So across the front, you can see we've got four kilograms difference left to right. And across the rear, we've got 35 kilos different. So this is mainly because the driver is sat on the left in this car and it's putting a lot of mass onto the left axle. So what we can do is make some changes to the ride heights to get this more even. So a few things we're looking at initially is these numbers here. So we've got front percentage and rear percentage. So that's the total amount of mass at the front and at the rear. So we've got 40.5 at the front and 59.5 at the rear. Now changing these with corner weighing is quite difficult to get a big change. That's more a packaging thing. The thing we can affect with corner weighting is the cross weight and the left to right masses. That's the key focus here with the cross weight being a major focus when it comes to corner weighing. The best way to describe cross weight is with this quick diagram here. So we've got a diagram of the car and we've got the front left wheel, the front right, the rear left and the rear right. And the cross weight is the front left plus the rear right divided by the front right plus the rear left. So the diagonal masses of the car. And we want this number as close to 50% as possible. When that is 50%, it means that the diagonal masses equal each other out and they're exactly the same as each other. This means that the car will behave the same through a left and a right hand direction corner. Whereas if it was a lot different, the car would feel different through left corners and right corners, which we don't want out of the car. It would be unpredictable and the behavior wouldn't be right. There are, however, some compromises to that. So when we're gonna corner weight the car, the way we do that is we, we raise and lower ride heights at each corner to pitch mass around the car. So we're not gonna add any mass into the car or remove any mass from the car. We're just gonna move the mass that's there around by manipulating ride heights. When we're doing this, we're gonna be setting the ride heights very slightly different, left to right and at each corner, but we need to be careful not to go too far out of whack. So what we're looking at doing is keeping the differences ideally within 7.5 millimeters in ride height between them. When we start going above 10 millimeters, we can move something called the roll center and that can start going off center. And what this does when it goes off center is it makes the car feel like it's got a stiff anti-roll bar in one direction and a soft anti-roll bar in another direction, which is really not nice to drive. It makes the car feel very different in left and right conditions. So we're looking for a compromise where we get in the cross weight as close to 50% as possible. We get our left to right as even as possible near 50% as well, but we're not gonna upset the, the balance of the car with the roll center. So we need to find that compromise. So we're gonna take the car in the air now and we're gonna make a few changes. Quick look at this is we're gonna be increasing the ride height of the front left mainly. That's where the majority of the change is gonna come from. And it's gonna pitch mass across the car onto this right rear because we're looking to get the mass as even as possible across the rear axle in this car. So we're okay to lose a bit from the front with it only being four kilos different to reduce this massive 35 kilos on the rear axle, especially with the car being rear wheel drive. It's a real focus to get those rear tires as even as possible in terms of mass. So we're gonna get the car in the air now, make a few changes to the ride heights and see what difference we can make. And then we'll fill this table in here with the, the result and we'll have a quick chat through it. We've got the front left wheel off the car now just to make a few ride height changes to fix the issues we saw in the corner weighing. We will have another episode further down the line with a little bit more detail on how to actually make those changes, how to choose the corners you're gonna make the adjustments at and what to expect from making those changes. But for now, we're just gonna say the fundamentals of, the, of corner weighing. So we're gonna increase this ride height now on the, on the front left, but we're not gonna do it all on this one corner. So the change we wanted to make on this corner, we're gonna divide that up around all four corners and make slight changes at each corner so we're not getting difference in ride height too much. We're gonna divide that across the car. So you just need a C-spanner. You're gonna put that on the c collars on, on the coilover and you're just gonna lean in there and you're gonna turn that up to raise ride height and turn the collar down to lower ride height. And that's gonna pitch that mass around the car. So I'm just gonna get onto this car and do all four wheels now. And then we'll meet back at the whiteboard and have a look at the settings and I'll see what we've ended up with. We've just finished the corner weighing and we've got our after figures now. So the way we've achieved this difference in the two numbers across this board is purely by changing the ride heights at each corner of the car. So we've increased ride height to pitch mass across and increase mass at the opposite diagonal corner, or we've decreased mass to pitch mass 
back away from an opposite diagonal corner. And that's the most effective way to move the weight around the car. So as you can see, our before and after masses are still exactly the same. So 1,045 kilos, that's not changed. But what you can see is the amount of mass at each corner is quite a lot different than before, even though the mass is still the same. And this was done by pitching that mass around the car. So the important figure we're looking for again is that cross weight. So before we had 51.5%, which is quite a long way away from 50. Now we're 50.2%. So we could have got that exactly 50, but we would have had to start going outside that window of difference we were talking about. So we were going over 7.5 million difference in ride heights, which we're not happy to do. So that's a very good compromise to stop at and achieve these numbers. Another thing you might notice is that now the front is now nine kilos different, whereas before we were only four kilos different. This is a conscious choice, again, a compromise, because we're more interested in getting that rear difference down from the 34 kilos down to what we now have as four kilos. So that means that on throttle, this car's got much more even traction at the rear tires, much more even amounts of grip, and that's what we're really interested in. The difference of only nine kilos across the front isn't gonna give us drastically different performance under heavy braking, whereas the, the 30 odd kilos would give us drastically different levels of grip on throttle. So you've got to find these compromises and make these calls depending on platform and usage of car. So this is the call we made on this car to get the rear tires as close as possible. And we were happy to upset the front axle a little bit more than when it came in so that we have a much more even balance across the car. The other side of this is that our cross weight is now a lot more even. So through the lefts and rights, the car's gonna feel a lot more planted and it's gonna feel a lot more reliable to the driver as it's gonna feel the same through the left and right. Whereas before, we ran the risk of the car feeling quite a lot different through the corners. So we've achieved that on, on both settings there. Once you're happy with your corner weighting and all your ride heights are set and all your C collars are locked back off, what you can do with an adjustable drop link like this car has is leave the ones disconnected that you disconnected at the start, put the wheels back on, put the car back onto the patch so all the weight is on the wheels, then go underneath the car and you want to reach in and reconnect the anti-roll bar with the adjustable drop link set to the length where there's no tension whatsoever in order to get that drop link back in. That means that at the corner weighted ride height, the roll bars are carrying zero tension, which means that they're not going to affect the balance of the car in left and right hand conditions. And it's going to handle as evenly as possible and get the most out of the corner weighing that you've just done on the car. That's the corner weighing complete on this car now. So the things we would have seen before, are it would have been quite loose through a left-hand corner and quite tight through a right-hand corner. And that would have been very noticeable as a driver when attacking corners on the track. And, and you don't want that anticipation going into a corner that in one direction it's gonna behave one way and in another direction it's gonna behave like a completely different car. So that's where corner weighing really comes into its own to get the behavior of the car symmetrical effectively through left and right-hand corners. The braking traction before won't have been too bad on this car at all. Um, it was only four kilos different across the front axle, which is, is really nice. So the braking traction will have been good before and after. So not a massively noticeable change there on this car. At the rear, however, on full throttle, there will be a noticeable difference in terms of levels of traction and would make the diff do a lot less work in a straight line with this setup, giving each tire even levels of grip on traction on full throttle. So, now with the car on full throttle, it's gonna hook up and it's gonna push forward nice and straight like a train. Whereas before, it would have just tried squirming a little bit as the tires were scrabbling around to share the grip. So we've got rid of that, that little difficulty as well. So overall now, the car is gonna feel a lot more stable and planted on full throttle, and it's gonna feel nice and symmetrical through the corners. So now that corner weighing is complete, we're gonna give this car an alignment to finish that off, to set the camber and the toe settings. If you want any more information on corner weighing and a bit more detail, there's plenty of information on the articles on our website at suspensionsecrets.co.uk. We're also gonna be doing a few more technical videos down the line. So subscribe to the channel if you want any more videos in the future.